We were not simply building something. We were on a mission, we were on an adventure. Our focus was on mission success. It was challenging, but we really had a good time doing it. This thing had a wing on it and it had fins on it and it, you know, it looked very, very sexy. It's nothing better than the adrenaline rush that you get as you get ready to launch. Back in the late 80s, we hired around that time a gentleman that was an expert in satellite communications. So he had this idea of using a lot of small satellites in low Earth orbit to perform the job that had until then been performed by large satellites in very high orbits. Problem was, uh, there wasn't a rocket suitable to launch those satellites. The Air Force had launched a small rocket from an F-15 fighter. So I started doodling an F-15 and climbing flight and a small rocket coming out of it, showed the drawing to everybody else and we said, gee, why, why don't we do this? This would be a cool idea to build a rocket that is launched from an airplane and that's how we embarked on what became Pegasus. So in the summer of 87, having decided to go ahead with the initial design of this rocket, we visited NASA's Dryden Flight Research Center and asked them to help us with a carrier aircraft to carry Pegasus. The director said, sure, you can use our B-52. Our first carrier airplane was a NASA B-52, and it was a heavy lift aircraft that launched the X-15. So it was sort of ideally suited to launch uh, the Pegasus on its early test flights. And they protected that plane quite a bit. The X-15 was launched on a pylon from the right-hand side, the right wing, and we were not allowed to change that pylon. So we had to come up with our own pylon that interfaced between the Pegasus and that X-15. We decided that if, if we were going to use a NASA airplane, we needed a company representative on the plane, kind of a flight test engineer. You know, I actually flew on the B-52 on that first mission. I didn't push the button, but I'd move all the switches just before the pilot pushing the button. That's one, let's go. We were very happy that the first flight flew beautifully and um, we were all very proud, but we knew there had to be other flights. So there was this feeling that the job had not been done yet. Well, in the early days, we had very small teams, so everyone was multi-hatted, multi-tasked. So you go out there and you want to meet the team and you expect to see lots of people, and there's like six people there. That's the team. Six people out in the middle of nowhere building an air launch rocket. The, the sense of adventure was there. There was a sense of risk. We, we were all afraid, let's, let's be honest about it. But our enthusiasm and our sense of, of focus and objective just overrode completely any concerns that we had. And the, the unique thing about the Pegasus air launch system is you're not just sitting still on a launch pad pointing up into the sky. I mean, that vehicle's not moving. This vehicle's moving X, Y, across the Earth and up and down. You can see the rocket. You know, you have a camera looking at the nose and a camera looking from the back, and you can actually see it. Then all of a sudden, it just disappears, so you see nothing. Your baby that you just worked on night and day for hours and hours just fell from an airplane, free fall. And it only falls for five seconds, but I actually stood up because it felt like it was lasting an hour. I mean, it was the longest five seconds I've ever experienced on any kind of, and I've never gotten used to that. You know, we started out on the B-52 and then we transitioned to the L-1011. Uh, you know, we were advertising it as a mobile platform that could go anywhere. Buying and operating our own airplane to be the launch aircraft for Pegasus certainly was a major uh, accomplishment. When it was all said and done, we had an airplane that we could go around the world with, essentially. Probably the first exciting one that we did was Minisat Spain. The Minisat 01 was built in Madrid, Spain, and we brought the rocket to the satellite for launch. So we left uh, Vandenberg Air Force Base, California, and flew the Pegasus all the way across the Atlantic to Madrid. We then integrated the Minisat onto the uh, Pegasus inside the fairing. Next stop was Canary Islands, where we uh, uh, repositioned the airplane and then launched off the west coast of uh, Africa. That's one of the beauties of uh, air launch. You can go a lot of different places and 
uh, meet a lot of different requirements. Conducting the missions was the fun part. You know, um, in fact, uh, I think from 96 to 98, I think we launched 16 missions uh, over that three-year period. And so that's launching about every two months. So the design was mature, we weren't changing it. And so, you know, we, we were able to just focus on, you know, launching the payloads, working with the customer and, and um, conducting the missions. Now that difference in, in mission rate really caused major improvements, changes and improvements in our production. We also, I think during that time, really developed the uh, culture and process of reliability. You know, there was some rough times there in the beginning, but as we uh, matured the vehicle and improved the design, um, uh, you know, we've been 100% successful since uh, back to 1997. So we've had 28 uh, successes in a row, and we're very proud of that. We were happy that we were successful, but then, you know, we were also looking to make sure that they were a success. We've worked with customers from all uh, aspects, the DOD, the civil, the commercial, and there's really a great sense of accomplishment to place their very expensive piece of hardware exactly where it's supposed to be in orbit. Somewhere around uh, Flight 10, Flight 10 to Flight 20 was a big transition point. We broadened out our uh, customer base to include commercial and to, com to include civil. Uh, by civil, primarily NASA. NASA ultimately became the biggest user of Pegasus and uh, flew 19 missions of the current 42 missions. On the commercial side, we launched a uh, communication satellite constellation. Uh, it's a so-called Little Leo uh, satellite constellation. And that was a big part of our commercial uh, business. The other aspect of commercial business was we had quite a few foreign space agencies come to us on a commercial basis and have us launch their R&D uh, spacecraft. I think there's still lots of opportunities throughout this coming decade. We've got uh, two missions for NASA. One of them is uh, called Cygnus. Uh, it's a eight uh, microsatellite constellation that's going up. And then we've got another mission called ICON, which is studying the uh, ionosphere of the Earth. So we've got two great missions, uh, a lot of activity going on, and uh, looking forward for more. If Pegasus wouldn't have worked, you know, I, I don't think we'd be the company we were today. I don't think we would have gotten the confidence and the wins. There were great moments on, on the history of Pegasus. The day before the launch of the first Pegasus, or a couple of days before the launch, I was at the assembly building at Dryden, and Dave Thompson showed up with a 10-gallon hat. So he had me hold down on Pegasus and wave my 10-gallon hat in the same way as Slim Pickings wave the hat in Dr. Strangelove as he flew down to his doom on the H-bomb from the B-52. In 1991, the United States government decided to honor the team that built Pegasus with, with a very important distinction, the National Medal of Technology. And, and that, that, is, that is quite an honor. We were all invited to go to the Rose Garden we had our picture taken with the president and the secretary, and boy, that, uh, <laughs> that was something. Designing a rocket that, that goes to space, or being the principal designer of a rocket that goes to space, is the kind of stuff that um, teenage ki kids dream of, college kids dream of, college professors dream of. It's amazing how many times I go back to my old school and, and meet my old colleagues, and some of them actually have gone to very, very important positions and careers, but they all still have a little envy that I was the one of, of all of them that actually designed that rocket and it went to space. When I look back, some of the things that we did almost don't seem possible. We were driven by doing something different. And you, know, you look back in a, in a very respectful way and you're very proud to have been part of that. And every time I see the Pegasus uh, vehicle in the Smithsonian, that's exactly what comes back to me. It was or those moments that I slept on a sofa at Dryden in the middle of the desert just so I can get up earlier and get out to the flight lines. Pegasus is really a great uh, program. And I look back on uh, all of the uh, Pegasus accomplishments with a sense of uh, pride, and I'm uh, very proud to be part of uh, that team. The team worked hard, uh, and they were driven to get everything to work. Um, and, and, and I think the team also understood what it meant to Orbital. It was a good time, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. There's not many people that get the opportunity to spend their life in aerospace on a single program. We've just had an incredible uh, group of people that have 
uh, taking responsibility, uh, a lot of accountability, and uh, to me that's what's made the difference. I was very lucky to be a part of it.